Hey everyone, welcome back to the next episode of my DC2 race car build. Uh, last time I completed all the wiring and got that installed in the car. This time it's getting it ready for first start, so I've been beavering away all day. Sun's getting a bit low now. Um, just checking through things, setting up the base map and the ECU and the PDM, giving the keypad working, checking sense and functionality, all sorts of bits and pieces. So I'll just um, jump in and show you a few things with that. So it's been a day primarily on the laptop. Um, basically right at the start I imported a uh, like a base map from a different style of Helltech because I didn't have one for the for the Nexus R3 that I'm running um, and that's a base map for a K20 but a specific one that I have which is a 2005-2006 uh, DC5 Type S. I uh, went through set up all the different sensors that I'm running so map sensor, fuel pressure, oil pressure, everything, everything there's lots in there set up the fuel pump outputs. I've got two fuel pumps. I've got a, um, a lift pump in the main tank behind me and then a surge pump in the in the engine bay. Um, gave those an override button so I can turn those on. When the car's not running, uh, for things like getting 98 out of the tank so I can fill it up with the 85. And just kept working through it. So there's a heap of things here. This lot obviously took me like six hours to, to get through. Setting up thermo fans, same thing, the radiator fans on an override switch so I can turn that on. Um, set up all the body functions, so indicators left and right. Um, this is the, what am I doing with fog lights? I can't remember. I think that's the rain light at the back. Uh, has lights, low beam headlights, high beam headlights, putting the wipers on. Uh, the front windscreen demister, so when the windscreen goes back into it, it has filaments in it, like, you, like a rear windscreen normally does in a car. Um, so turning those on will, will demist that. Got the horn working, uh, pit speed limiter. I wanted to set up a variable launch control RPM. I haven't figured out how to do that yet. I'll do that at some point. Um, and start stop. So one, one press to start the car, one press to stop the car. So after I'd set up everything in the ECU just kind of, you know, like dry without anything powered up. I connected up the battery under there, um, tested all my relays, made sure it all worked. Switched on the ECU and started checking through the sensors one by one to make sure the outputs were correct. Um, that was interesting. I had quite a few issues with my pressure and temperature sensors. So I'm running combined Bosch, like um, pressure temperature sensors, like it's one, one sensor that gives you both. Turns out I'd wired them completely backwards, so I had to just take the connectors off those, uh, de-pin and re-pin them the right way around, and I got that working. Um, I found some documentation online that told me the wrong way, and I also interpreted it the wrong way. So once I found the right documentation, that was pretty easy to sort out. Got all the sensors working. I then set up my half ass dash display. So this is an AIM Solo 2 data logger. It's not designed as a, to be a dash, but you can display up to four different um, things on it at a time, which will do for now. I can't afford to spend four or five thousand dollars on a, a proper logging dash at this moment. Um, so I've got a configuration for that, so that reads all the data from the Helltech ECU via the CAN, CAN bus, um, and I've set it up so it tells me sort of like speed, oil pressure, coolant temperature, oil temperature, just the main engine vitals. I don't need to see RPM. These LEDs on the side will um, will show me that once you know it acts as, as a shift light basically. And then the slide at the top, um, I haven't set this up yet either because I don't know how to, in the Helltech software, but I'm going to have this as like a multi-stage warning light. So I'll have it to flash on, just like stay on when there's like a minor engine issue. So like say it throws a code or something like that. I'll have it flash at me sort of quite slowly, like on and off once a second. If there's a minor issue, so temperature's just gone above a set limit, um, you know, like your coolant temperature gets to like, let's say 105. So like it's... It's getting up there but it's not ridiculous and then i'll have it flash very quickly at me when there's something serious happening so temperature's gone way too high or oil pressure's gone to nothing um, and that's when i need to immediately kill the car and stop it so once that's all set up um, i then filled the fuel system up and primed and checked that so that's all working as i said before i've got um, a rear pump and a front pump so i had to run the, the lift pump first get all the fuel to come through and fill up the surge tank and then enable the surge pump so that that would um, then feed the rail and then check that the pressure was all good just adjusted the fuel pressure regulator to, to see that 
So yeah, like I said, lots of stuff and around. We're now at the point where I'm pretty close to trying to start the car. Um, but just a general sort of run through functionality, I have my kill switch up the top and there's a second kill switch on the outside of the car just down by the A-pillar there as well on the same circuit. So when I press that on, that's going to power up everything and uh, you'll hear the fuel pump start. So that's all primed up. My uh, dash display is on. You can see the sort of data that's showing there. Um, the UCU buttons are on, that's all good. And these lights, things like horn, um, I can turn the fans on. Hopefully you could hear that fan. Uh, turn the fuel pumps on manually. And then just things like indicators and hazard lights, which I've tested all these and they all work pretty well. To turn it all off again, just press the button, kills everything. Um, this has an internal battery, so it does keep going. Um, so I can just turn that off manually as well. All right, that's it. I'm just going to hook up a battery charger because I think my battery's had a bit of a flogging. It's just a tiny little lithium. Um, and we'll get ready to start cranking the motor and checking that it builds oil pressure. All right, so I've just hooked up a battery charger. Uh, hopefully that provides enough juice to keep this thing going, but we will see. And just jumping in the map, the really important thing here is I've disabled the injectors. So in the ECU, uh, it won't fire the injectors even though the thing cranks. So let's have a go and we'll see what um, we'll see what happens. The sun is terrible at the moment, so apologies, you probably can't see shit. Um, but what I'll try and do is focus that on the screen and we'll see if the oil pressure um, measurement seems to come up. So this one might be a bit easier, we can see it on the screen in the, the bottom left, currently it's pretty minimal. Um, I'll probably have, this has like a, I press the button and it'll cycle for five seconds before it starts and then it'll stop. Um, so I'll probably have to do that a few times to get the oil pressure to sort of come up to speed because there's probably nothing in the oil pump at all. Let's have a go. Awesome, that's working perfectly. All right, we'll take that one off the list. Um, what I'll do now is probably get ready to attempt to fire it up. It's gonna be loud as shit because it's got open headers. Uh, so apologies to my neighbors, but I won't run it for very long just to check that it actually works. I have no idea if it will or not. Um, it's just the base map from Helltech, so hopefully all the timing offsets and everything set up correctly because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, I'll just re-enable those injectors and we'll have another go. Alrighty, time for a first start. Uh, set you up on a tripod, so I'll jump in and start it up. Then I'll very quickly jump out and just start looking around for leaks and everything. And like I said, I won't run it for very long because it's going to be loud as shit. Let's see how we go. Alrighty, that one was a fail, um, doesn't seem to be wanting to catch. I did test the injectors, they're all clicking, so I know that's working. Um, I'll just start checking everything from the start and come back once I've done that. Alright, welcome back, it's a new day. Um, did a bit of troubleshooting last night and the computer is not getting an, EC, um, an RPM signal. So just trace that back to, I'd put the pins in the wrong way around in the crank sensor connector. 
um, I just had it backwards when I was putting them in. So pretty easy fix, just repin that connector and ran the car up um, with the injectors disabled before and I'm seeing RPM signal. So theoretically we're good to go and we'll have another crack now. And great success, first time. So everything looked pretty good, so oil pressure was fine, all the temperatures were looking pretty good. As I said before, it was loud as shit, so my neighbours will hate me, but whatever. Um, that started up, that's perfect. I'll just check over a few fluids and things, and probably get the wheels on it, and see if it drives backwards and forwards. Right, that's now back on the ground. Let's see if it moves under its own power. Well, it does go forwards, but it does not go backwards. Um, I had trouble getting it, well, couldn't get it into reverse when I was up on the stands. Thought it might change with a bit of rotation from the engine moving, but no deal, so I have to look at that. Um, but it does go into the other gears and moves out pretty well. Very, very stoked with that. All right, so with that problem with reverse, um, I had a bit of a play around and I could shift it into reverse, manually activating the, the shifter on the gearbox itself, uh, but not with the shifter. So what I did is I just ended up removing the lock nut um, behind this linkage here just to get a little bit more travel on the shifter cable and that's done the trick so that's now getting into reverse nice and easy. So yeah, we have a running and driving car. A lot more to go. Um, next week the Glazier is coming to get the windscreen back in it and the, um, the windows. I have a carbon fibre trunk on the way, so I'll probably just put the glass back into the, the stock steel one here for now. Um, and I've got the, the Lexan for the carbon one when that shows up, so that'd be a really nice weight saving. Um, and lots of little tidy up jobs, so I've got some side skirts coming, they need to be trimmed up, um, along with the sill tubes, so that can all get fitted up. Uh, it's got to get an exhaust fabricated for it, and an intake. Not much room for an intake, I kind of snookered myself with putting this catch can right in the way. Uh, but probably what we'll do is, is route somewhere around here then down into that down to that front fender well area. Um, so I'll take this off 
I think this coming Tuesday, a couple of days away, um, head up and get exhaust and that fabricated. And then it's booked in for a dyno tune in just under two weeks time. So I'll probably just get it back from the exhaust guy and get it up for a dyno. So not much more to do before it goes on the dyno, probably just bleed the coolant. So once it's got an exhaust and I can run it for more than 10 seconds without waking up the whole neighborhood, I'll get the coolant bled. Uh, just run it through a heat cycle, make sure you know the fan and everything's working and no leaks when it's all up to full temp. And uh, we'll go for a tune and see what it does. Yeah, really happy with the progress. It's been 12 months of hard work. Um, yeah, that, like I said in the last video, that wiring really kicked my ass. It's probably 150, 160 hours in total in the wiring. So four solid months, sorry, uh, four solid weeks on top of a full-time job. So that made it like three or four months. Uh, but we're there, everything seems to work. I've tested all the sensors, pretty happy for a first time. Just gotta get on the dyno and get it ready. The event that I want to compete in first up is the um, Bunbury Rally Sprint, which is in 19th of November. Uh, we're in 2023 at the moment, so that's about four weeks away from today. So a lot of work to do to get there, but we'll push hard and hopefully get in at least one test day beforehand as well. So I'll take you along the journey for that too when it all happens. Thanks very much. See you next time.